friends from Pankaz de Porcén. We make a, a few changes, and now we were trying to we were to transform the page and the and the podcast of Pankaz de Porcén to and so it goes. So for our first uh, big uh, move, we're gonna make a good interview with my one of my favorite singers of punk rock, Mr. Handsome Dick Manitola from Dictators. Thank you, sir. Muchas gracias. Uh, and because he's here from the country of Valencia, we're gonna start a little interview with some with some questions about your past, your present, and the future. All right. <coughs> you were born in in New Jersey, 19. 54, me. Was Bronx. Bronx. Bronx, New York. New York in 19. All right. Born in Manhattan, raised in the Bronx. All right. So, where do you did your first concert? I mean, I, when I was like five years old, I was 15 years old. <laughs> All right. Again, uh, both. Tell me both. Um, there used to be a place in the Bronx called Freedom Land. It was an amusement park in the shape of America. It was amazing. And it was in the Bronx. And when I was a little boy, my parents go there three, four times a year. And they had a big stage and I saw, believe it or not, a lot of people, because when I do my radio show, I saw how many people saw Louis Armstrong. I was a little kid, five, six years old, and I saw oh. Louis Armstrong. And I saw Paul Anka when he was a teenage idol. Those, those are my first uh, people I saw on stage as a kid in this amazing amusement park. Uh, my first show at the Fillmore East, which was the greatest American rock palace ever yes. to me, uh, was um, the headline. The first two bands you would know. The headline band was Proco Harrow. Oh, I, lo I, lo I, lo I really like Proco Harrow. And then, I, then, then I saw um, uh, The Who, Chuck Berry, and Albert King, who was the blues master. Um, and then uh, The Who, Sweetwater, and It's a Beautiful Day. So I saw the group twice early on. I saw a bunch of shows, about 12 shows in the film. Oh, all right. And you're, uh, as I've said, so you already, you already, you already asked me the, 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 the first question. I mean, your first concert, your, as, a, as a musician, the first concert, as a musician, where you do it? Um, <clears throat> more important than my first concert, which I don't even remember, was the first time I got on stage and then it became clear that I should be the lead singer. Yes. There was a place called Popeye's Spinach Factory in Brooklyn, New York. And Chris Stein from Blondie was there. And um, a guy, um, what's his name? Um, shit, I hate this. Uh, I, I feel bad because he passed away. I feel like I'm disrespecting his name. Um, and, 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 anyway. His band was the Magic Tramp, so it'll come to me. And he was like part of the Andy Warhol crew. So oh, there were all these yeah. unique and amazing characters at the birth of punk, or even pre-punk, that were way out in Brooklyn. Brooklyn, was, where this part of Brooklyn is far from Manhattan, like you know, 20 miles. And um, the Dictators played, and you know, like this, this the lead singer uh, at the time, who was the songwriter. You know, people he didn't have a lot of charisma. People were like, you know, cool, cool. And then I was like drunk, the roadie. And they go, hey, head, head to the do wild thing. So I did wild thing. Wait, by the trucks? Yeah. Oh, great song. And they went crazy. Everybody went nuts. <laughs> and it went over 10 times better um, than, than the guy who was sitting in the song. So I didn't become lead singer right then, but it was like, you were on to something. Mm. You know, there was something more magical that happened when I took the microphone. Mm. Because you were in the, in the, in the... Emerson, his name was Emerson, in the Magic Tramps. I just can't think of his first name. Emerson. Keith Emerson, maybe? No, not Emerson. Keith Emerson. Mm. But it's Emerson. I don't know mm. if you know. Uh, uh, all right, all right. No. That's great. That, that, that sounds great. Uh, the, the, your, the, <clears> it was a great, it was a... It was a defining moment in the history of the Dictators. Mm -hmm. I guess you, you were in the, in the sleeve of the first of the first LP in Dictators Go Get Crazy. You were the, you were in the, the outfit. Yes, in the, in, the, in, the, in the yes in the outfit in the, in the front page. Yeah. Yes, we dressed like like we a wrestler. Yeah. Yes. Looking <laughs> man. Yes. All right. All right. What were your influence to become a musician? I mean, the bands and the musicians, like the singers or 
No, I didn't see. Uh, it was a very unique situation. Mm. I never aspired to be a musician or a singer or be in a band. I always loved musicians and singers and bands, and I went to millions of concerts. And you know, I read about them and I listened to records and I loved music. It never. It was like something that didn't exist. And then it sort of came into my sight a little bit more. And then more, and then more, and then more, and then all, all of a sudden I realized I had something. And then I worked with it, and I built it. That's good, that's good. good. What will be the most... Eric Emerson. Oh, uh, Eric Emerson. Thank all you. Right. Sorry, Eric. <laughs> Sorry, Eric. <clears throat> all right. He was part of the group of the, of the Warhol scene. They were called the Magic Trance. They were part of the Warhol crew, mm -hmm. um, from what I understand. And Chris Stein was there. But every year that goes by, it's one of those stories where I, 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 everyone says, oh yeah, I was at that show, I was at that show. <laughs> Every year more and more people were at that show. Yeah, yeah like the story of everyone was in the, was in the first concert of the Ramones. And, yeah. you know, <laughs> and there were nine people. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right, what was your most bizarre moment in a concert? I mean, the most crazy thing that happened to you in a concert? Nothing really that crazy. One girl got up and took her clothes off. <laughs> That's it. I remember one, I think it was two years ago, and someone take your hat in, uh, in Loco, in Loco, in Loco, in Valencia. Oh, really? Take, take your hat. Yeah, and you wanted, <laughs> yes, and you wanted to stop the concert. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, it was that. I remember that. They crossed the boundary. Yes. Yeah. So, what's your opinion right now about the rock and roll scene in, I mean, in the States and in Spain? In, in the States in general, it's not, there are, there are certain genres like heavy metal that do very well. Some sell well, mostly live. Um, hip, hip hop does well. Um, rock and roll isn't what it used to be. You know, there used to be like your huge, huge bands you know, eight, ten million albums a year, then three, four million albums, then a million, then a, you know, then your 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 people like got in bands like us. It's much less now. There, there are plenty of bands out there playing, but it's not as much as it used to be. It's not as big a scene, and um, there are just a handful of giant acts, and the rest are, you know. It's not as big. Hip hop has taken over as far as that, as far as rock and roll goes. That's why every rock and roll band I know comes to to Europe and Spain and Scandinavia and Japan. Mm -hmm. It's like the old jazz musicians I talked to that for years. Where you going? Japan? Where you going? Spain? Where you going? You know, uh, France. Jazz is an American mm -hmm. art form. Rock and roll is an American art form. Mm -hmm. But um, it's. Dwindle. This like I do a radio show for little Steven Van Zandt, and he has maybe 25% new bands, right? And they're good bands. Most of them are, to me, are good bands. They, they play well, they're, they're, they sing well, but they, they, there's not a big audience for them. Yes, that's, that's true, that's true. There's not big audience. I mean, that's just a thing. Right. Name me your. Uh, three favorite songs from all time. <laughs> all right, I, I, no, three songs that you really like I, I, to I, try to play in the in, in the in the I in the radio. I can tell you, I always say I, li I like that question. I, I use it on my radio. Um, I, I could say um, there's songs I could tell you right now, and then wake up tomorrow and say. I changed my mind, <laughs> right? Yes. Right this minute is what yes. counts. This minute. This minute. Right. No, no order. No, no order. No order. Satisfaction. I run stance. Waterloo Sunset. Uh, Kings. Yeah. Maybelline. Chuck Berry. Right. Rest in peace. Right. All right. Um, now I always, when I do these interviews now, is this is my third interview we recorded in in video, no, actually I made it for, for radio, recorded in, in, in a small podcast. But I, also, I always do this, uh, the, the interview, I have to choose between two artists, and it was a favorite. So I choose 
six that are very old from New from a America, and I uh, I want to know what we would you like more. All right, first one, Ramones or Blondie? Man, I'm friends with all of them. You can't do that. You can't do that. To me. Yeah, I know. Debbie, I'm close with Debbie. I'm close with Chris. Yes. Yeah, I got you. You're gonna choose. I can't pick because uh, because they do two completely different things in the umbrella of rock and roll. Great. One is is more of of a of a sweet pop, pure pop, and one is more of a of a punky yes. pop, you know? Uh, I mean, the early Blondie stuff has a punky side, but I, I, I do the same thing to people like <laughs> All right. I, 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 but the thing is, they're all friends of mine. The only one that, but actually, there's nobody alive from the original Ramones. Yes. So yeah. I, 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 love, I love them both so much. All right. Stooges or MC5? I asked that one. <laughs> I didn't know that. I asked that one. I didn't know that. I always do that. I <laughs> asked that one over my interview. I have a list like 15 things. I'll tell you some of the things I asked. All right. I asked that one. <laughs> Fuck, man. <laughs> um, another one. I play with the MC5. I know that. I know that. I got to go with the Stooges. Yeah. It's, it's like, like by like this, mm. that close. Like, mm. I do, uh, here in Valencia, I do uh, a show of of cover songs of, 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 wow. of Iggy, Puff and the Stooges. And I, and I also do some on the sections, right? And they put my name as a much to Iggy Puff, because I'm a great fan. I call myself Beanie Puff, because we were doing my, my oh, yeah. name. Yes, it's one of my, one of my favorite artists. He, I love it. I'm, I'm into Beanie, he's great. But, you know, it's like if I'm listening to the MC5, it could be like, yeah, I like the MC5 better. Then I'm listening to this like that. Listen to the Stooges, the Stooges is better. The thing is, the MC5 are amazing. It, the, the guitars were amazing, the singing, the songwriting, everything. There was something, there was something that changed things for me about the Stooges. It, it, not like the Beatles, but, but it was so primal, you know. Danny Fields, who I'm friends with, yes. tells me a story. I said, you know, so exactly what happened because I interviewed him. So he's a friend of mine. He goes, Ah, oh, I was walking up the staircase and I, I knew I, I knew I was gonna sign. Up. They were upstairs in the room playing. He was walking up the staircase and he knew he loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I saw Danny Field when after it was, I think it was manager of the Ramones, no? Yeah, I mean, the Ramones, he signed the MC5, yeah. Stooges, friend, he's friends with Linda McCartney, friends with uh, Andy Warhol. Danny knew everybody. Danny, you talk to him, he knows everybody. All right, last one, Velvet Underground or New York Dogs? Velvet Underground. Yes. Uh, all right. What do you think is the secret of uh, your success? Would I have one of my sort my? No, I didn't. I one of my uh, question. No. Okay. No, I, I, I did the one the first time. And I didn't know that you always did it. Did it still just MC5? I didn't know that. I do. Yeah. I mean, I have a list of things, but some of them are different, like toilet paper this way or this. Way. <laughs> That's one really of mine. That's funny. Oh, yeah, I do stuff like that. I asked Alice Cooper that. <laughs> All right, all right. So, what do you think is the secret of our success? Every time you came Valencia, every time it's nearly sold out, every time it's great. What do you think is the, is, is the, is the secret? I don't know because I don't know, you know, like in Basque country, like they love us. Like, I, I don't know. Like in some places, people are like this, and some people do like this. <laughs> it, you know, are we better one night than the other? No, it's just the town, certain towns are a certain way and certain people are a certain way. And if we see that energy, if we feel that energy from the people, then that's gonna boost our energy, you know? We, it's like, goes back and forth. But, um, you know, I'm just glad to come here and the, the minute I see people excited to see me, I get excited. <laughs> me so that, too. That's how it me works, too. you know? Me too. All right, uh, do you remember who was the waitest fan you ever shared the stage? What? The, the way this band. I mean, I mean, uh, the like band. Yes. That's a tough one. I have a good band. I, I mean, it's a it's 43 years ago. <laughs> Someone you remember, like, like three, like last three years, maybe last three years. It was weird. 
on stage. I, I, <laughs> That's a tough question. Right? I, I just don't think of anybody really. I think some bad bands, like shit bands. <laughs> all right, all right. Do you think that we will have another great decade of music by like the 70s, or the 70s is over and probably we don't have more great music? I can't predict life. The excitement, the excitement of life is itself. Yes, yes. And um, there is a ripeness politically for good music. Yes. There's a lot of, like in the 60s and 70s. Yes. It was a, a lot of political upheaval. Yes. A lot of uh, kids didn't like America. Oh, no. yes. And they're, right now, because of the way the yes. politics are, there is that same, those same seeds have been planted. Yes. So it's possible, but I don't want it to be like the 70s. Mm -hmm. Because the 70s are the 70s. It's in a box, it's yes. over. Yes. I want 2020 to 2030 to have some, its own identity and be something new. It could be against the government, like it was in the 70s. I didn't know. All right, all right. And I'm not God, so, you know. The, your, your, your tour was named We Are Black. Was the, is it is our, uh, our, our, and the origin of the name, or you just pick it up because... No, I tell you what I think it. I'm a big fan of UFC. You know UFC? The ultimate Fighting Championship? Yes. Okay. Mixed martial arts. Ah, it's the yes. biggest company in the world. All right. Yes. And they just sold for four billion dollars. Yes. And the announcer goes crazy. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Las Vegas Arena. And we'll go like this. For UFC number 212, we are so that's the yeah. become. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's the screams it. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> that's good, that's good. Uh, last year you record a, 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 a single called, uh, I think it was a. Uh, as an oil supply in the mind. It's going to be next step, like, like an LP, or it's just a, a single celebrating. I, I tell you, I wrote that. Like two years ago, it was like 60, 61. Yes. And I thought, like, it's a good, solid little rock tune, you know? Yes, I know. And then I, know. I run into Dave Bush, who wrote about 40 books on rock and roll history. His wife manages Bruce Springsteen. And he said that song is a masterpiece. That's what he told me. He told me, I didn't say it. <laughs> he said to me, I said, oh, that's because, awesome. because, sorry, you were a good friend of, 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 Bruce, of Bruce Springsteen. Yeah, I'm not a good friend, and then you know he knows who I am. We see each other. Say hi. Oh, so you're you're a good friend of Steve and Sam, sorry. Yeah, well, Steve's but he's a friend and a boss, you know. So um, um, so he said he was some. It's a great way to sound supplying the man. Oh, so, right. so we have this other song called. Uh, I fell in love with Jackie D, and we finished it like sort of pre-production. Yes. And it's on the table. Fifteen months ago we finished it, and we didn't go to the studio for fifteen months. It's sitting there. <clears throat> in the meantime, a guy named John Tibbet, T I V E N, he lives in uh, Nashville, he calls me up and says he's been hearing that I'm writing. He likes what I'm writing. Me and him, the last six weeks, have eighteen songs. From zero. Yes. Not completely done, but there's four or five like pretty much done. And then there's four or five which are like a little bit more work, and then there's four or five which need a bunch more work. This guy worked with Wilson Pickett, oh Arthur, Arthur Alexander, uh, Steve Cropper from Booker T and the MGs. And Bruce Brothers. And I'm not just ready. He was, he was there. Oh, this right. Well, yeah. yeah, the whole yes. crew. The whole, yes. you know, stacks of uh, Don Covey, Mercy Mercy. I mean, he keeps telling me more and more people he's worked with. And this guy, every day, give me more words, give me more words, here's music. The next day, here's the music, the next day. So, there will, there will be an album. 
it would be. I, I, I don't know if I'm putting it out with these guys, but other guys are. I'm, I have ideas and and enough in me that I am making. I'm I'm, I'm going to be making. All right, all right. I'm, I'm very pleasure to listen. It's going to be great because I have so much in me. I had this like my friend Palmyra Delaware. It's a great songwriter. She goes. I don't know who fucked your head up, but man, this stuff, you have so much in you. So if it's in me now, it's been in me all my life. I have a song, I have uh, two, two romantic songs. One song from Plan 9 from Out of Space, the Terrible. Oh, movie. yes. I have a song about the guy who wrote I Wish It Would Rain, He Killed Himself from The Temptations. I have a song about. Uh, uh, about you you really time. like so music. I like a, okay, you know, I, I wrote a, a surf song. I want to move to Surfside. I want to live in Surfside. You know, I, I, wrote, I have like all these ideas, like ones about like how do we fight these you know, these, uh, Muslims, you know, because we've never had a fight with people like this before. Because we only know like in World War II, before we got to the you know, yes. you know, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, well, it's a little political, but it's a little funny and silly. A little bit of every, I'm not trying, that's me. Mm -hmm. That's all my shit in me. Oh, that's good, that's good. Yeah, what's going with Manitoba's Bar in New York City? It's going good? Uh, it's a good, it's like this. Yes. Well, I'm whatever, all through this, I'll tell you this. But we haven't signed it yet. I'm getting into the lawyers to stop fighting. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some days are good, some weeks are good, some days are bad, some weeks are bad. Bar is a weird business. Mm -hmm. It's like a roller coaster. Yes, yes. You made a confounding for the bar. I saw that you made a confounding. A what? A, like a crowdfunding. You, you pick oh, yeah, up yeah, 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 and yeah. It, was, it, was, it, was, it, had, it had very success. It was very success. Yeah, because uh, it's, uh, people know. call it serial sewers. That they, they go around and they pick out, like they give one guy in a wheelchair $500 and then he puts his name on 40 lawsuits. And the lawyers get twenty thousand dollars each, mm -hmm. and they sue everybody. And you can't—you don't want to go to court because twenty thousand dollars it push you up eighty thousand, a hundred thousand, yeah. and you could lose. Yes, you know. And even if you win, you're still spending eighty thousand dollars. Yes. I'm so that's what they figure. They'll, you give them twenty thousand. So, so I had to raise the money. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Okay, three more questions and we we'll finish. All right. Who was the last band that you saw alive in the states? The last band you saw live this year. Any band you were you were born, you were seeing in the states in concert? Anyone you remember? No, the last band. Jesus Christ! It's so stupid because they they go see. Uh, oh, I'll just say it was uh, the Pandoras. Mm -hmm. I, I, it probably wasn't. There's probably four, uh, but locally, I go see sometimes a local band. Yes. But the Pandora's. Pandora's. Yeah. All right, all right. Do you, do you feel like you're a, like a celebrity in New York, or you really just feel like I'm a guy, I made this, and I, I found ha I'm very happy doing this, and I have a, a, a really good friends? <coughs> you know, like, because you know, you've been. You've if been people call me a celebrity, they call me a celebrity. There's people come up to me and they like, you know. I don't let it go to my head. If people come up to me a lot in my little world, not in the big ones, not no. like the Bruce Springsteen 60,000 people world, people come up to me a lot and say, like, thank you so much, I love your music, you give me so happy. What that does is not make me feel like, it more makes me feel like, wow, man. Like, I come out of my house and do something I love doing, and you come out of your house and a hard week of work, have a few drinks, and you have a great time because of me and my band. It, may, it, it makes me feel honored, not you know. But if you, and sometimes people say like you're you're a hero or you're a celebrity, it's like I'm not, I'm not going to say no. I'm not. <laughs> I say thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. What are your plans to do after the tour? You just, again, I, I think you have a way. Is this, do you think it's the last or the last uh, uh, booking of Spain, or you have another two more? I don't know. Oh, we have we have uh, two more shows. Mm, yes. We're, we're Friday. We have Saturday, Sunday, mm -hmm. and 
Then I go home right away, right back to my radio show for little Steven, my 14 year old kid and all the problems yes. with the father, you know, head of household. We, we, have, we, have, a, we have a sister, she's 15 right now, so we understand you. And uh, I do my radio shows and then I sometimes play a few Dick Taylor songs and a few cover songs with these other guys in New Jersey just for fun, like the fun side. Yes. And, um, and uh, the bar, I have to worry about getting the next 10 years of the bar. And then maybe we'll come back to Europe in, um, I don't know about Spain, but in November. I don't think we want to come to Spain that much. No, um, you, 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 I, this is, this is the, the fourth time I hear you come. My third time, last year I could, you played here in Distanadas. I couldn't even come and I was very pissed off because I had a, a party, so I couldn't move from my from my yeah, so. so I really pissed off because I was a friend of the opening band and uh, I really I really enjoyed seeing you on, on stage. Um, thank you. Yeah, that's, you know, we play, we play, we go where we can afford to go, you know, we're not kids. We can't go come home and say, hey honey, I bought you one dollars a week home, you know. I have to come home with some money. Uh, but it's very hard work, mm -hmm. especially at our age. It's very difficult to sit in the van some days, six, seven hours, get to the hotel, you have a few hours to rest and play an hour and a half really hard, sign autographs for a half hour, right back to the hotel, right back to sleep, right back to the van, 18 shows, 19 days. And I'm not saying it's not great, the play is great, it, the fact that people want to pay to see us, I'm blessed. But it's, you know, it's also different, it's physical. Yes. Uh, Alright, you, you, we, we are here about the radio program, we, we can hear it. Oh, I guess in Europe, only online. Alright, so, can, can you say the, when we can, the, the page, when we can listen? Well, it, you have to buy it. Ah, yeah, we have to... It's pay radio. I suppose. It's called it's, it's it's satellite radio. All right. There was a company called Sirius, S O R I U S, and then XM, and they were the two big companies, the only two, and they merged. So there's only one company now called Sirius XM. It's all over Canada, and my friend said it's really good. Uh, it's something like I don't know, ten, fifteen dollars a month, and you get a hundred. 30 channels and the music channels have no commercials. Um, you know, just every channel, like uh, political and, and comedy and, and uh, soul and hip hop. Because it's, it's also the, the, 50, 60, 70, the, 80s, the, the radio when he's uh, Little Steven at the Grand Garage. Yeah. Does well, he, has, he does a show on terrestrial radio, regular right. radio, yes. once a week, but he also, this is his station mm -hmm. on the Grand Garage where he has. Uh, a bunch of DJs. Yes. Yeah. And he does he does one hour uh, every few like one hour a few times a day. Oh that's great, that's great. Thank you, Richard. It was pleasure. a pleasure. Thank Sir, you. I see, we see you in the Let's see what time I have to be there. Mm. We, see, we, see, we see you in in, in a, in a it's few it's hours. It's maybe maybe two hours we see you one hour and a half we see you in life. So it's eight forty three. Uh, Yeah, but 47 minutes. All right. All right, thank you. Thank you so Not much. Your fault, my fault. All right. All right. All right. Fighting with my wife so much. All right. Nice to meet you. I'll see you at the show. I'll see you at the show. Thank you. Bye. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you, friends, from... The, this is the beginning of uh, And So It Goes. So we see, we, we introduce some uh, radio... Ra ra uh, we introduce you uh, some tours, photos of the concerts and other things. Thank you so much. And so it goes, and so it goes, and so it goes. But where it's going, no one knows. And so it goes, and so it goes, and so it goes.